Hello and welcome to our quick introduction to, to Graph Tech here at the Makerspace. I'm going to start by explaining to everyone a little bit about the Graph Tech itself and then we'll hop right into a quick example cut on the Graph Tech. If I happen to have time, we'll also go into a couple more tutorials in a little while. But for now, this is just going, this video is just going to be a quick overview of the graph tech, how it works, as well as potentially showing off some cool settings. So let's get right into it. The first thing you guys will see is the on and off button. The on and off button is right here. We'll just flip it on. And um, I'm going to start moving the camera now. But as you can see, the on button was on the left hand side of the um, graph tech. So now that we have the machine turned on, we're now going to get and show some of the operation side. So we're going to zoom here in here kind of on the control panel. We're going to do adjust this. Alright, so the control panel can be a little scary at the start, but the first thing that will come up when you load um, your paper is these options, either roll one, roll two, or sheet. So, um, hold on, let's take a step back real quick. First, before we um, even see this, you'll have to load material in. Loading material in is quite easy. Um, as you can see here, all you need to do is ensure that the material is being touched by both of the rollers and that the rollers are next to the blue lines. This blue line is quite big um, and you can put this roller on any spot on the blue line you want. This other uh, blue line is smaller, but there are also two other blue lines that you can use um, to kind of create the perfect distance that you'd like. So ours is pretty small and I already have the blue line set up so that's good um, and we're good to go there. Now you'll notice in the back there's this lever. This lever lowers and raises the rollers so when you're adding in new vinyl just push the lever down and then push the lever back up to secure it. Now it should be nice and secure. Now back to the selection. So first things first, we'll talk about the roll one front edge. So essentially what this one will do is if you're working with a roll of vinyl, it will take the roll, which you can place in the back, and it's going to go up to the front edge and start cutting from the front edge. Um, this is probably what you're going to use most commonly if you have a roll of vinyl. Um, and it will assume that your roll is of infinite length. So um, if it's not of infinite length, then you need to be a little more careful in your settings, but we won't worry about that for now. So um, otherwise, if you have roll to current position, say you've already made some cuts lower down in the roll, and now you want to do a new cut, what you can do is you can position the roll with all your previously cut items like hanging off the front and then you can hit 2 to select the graph tech to start cutting right from the position you're at currently. And then finally if you're not using a roll you just select sheet and that's what we're doing today. So the graph tech will automatically find the area for you and show how big the mat is. Um, it'll also send that to the computer so that we can use it later. So now it's showing us um, three more options. We don't have to worry about them too much if we don't want to, but just to show them off, we can hit one to view and it'll show you the entire work area. Two for home, which will just return you to where you're going to start cutting from. And then you can also hit enter to look at condition numbers. So 
The condition numbers, we, there are eight preset conditions for the graph tech and they can be edited. Um, I've already edited number one so that number one um, is like the perfect cut for vinyl. Um, and it also does good with cutting into sticker paper. So I'd probably stick with one unless you're using a special material, at which point you'll have to mess around with it yourself. So then we're going to hit um, condition, we're on condition number one. So we'll keep that selected. You can change it if you want. Um, and you can see all the options there um, to switch it. Um, but we're going to be using condition number one. Now, um, to change the conditions, you can hit this condition test button, right? And you'll see the condition number, the tool, the speed, the force, uh, the distance adjust, the initial downforce, and the blade adjust, as well as the acceleration and all this other stuff. So we're not going to worry too, too much about it. As I said, I already have presets done for condition one that work best with vinyl and other things. But if you wanted to adjust them, you can just hit condition one and switch the condition um, to edit them. But um, we're not going to worry about that too much today. So perfect. Now we're going to hop over to the computer and we can look at how to actually make the machine run. All right, now that we're here at the computer, we're going to open up CorelDRAW. I already have that open, but if you don't have it already open, just go to the, um, the icon that's like a green um, circle with the, uh, the crayon. There's also um, a newer version of CorelDRAW that might have a little different logo, but it will be a green logo. Otherwise, if you're unsure about the logo, you can always type in CorelDRAW um, into the search bar by hitting Windows key and then typing in Corel. Um, it will be CorelDRAW. None of the other ones are being used for the graph tech. All right, so to begin, um, we are going to hit import. Um, for this thing. You could also design one yourself, but for ours, we're gonna use import. We're gonna just make a simple heart today. So I've already taken this heart um, from Wikipedia. So um, this is just a simple heart PNG, or um, it's, yeah, it's a PNG, but we're going to need to convert this to, um, to curves. So many of you will probably already know how to convert to curves, but we're just going to do that real quick and then get rid of the other one. If we didn't convert to curves, the graph tech would just cut out a big box and that's not what we want. We want it to cut out just the heart. So we converted to curves and CorelDRAW automatically saw the red outline of this item and cut it out for us. Now we can do whatever we want with this. We can turn it into black. Um, we can turn it, uh, we, well, we can't make it nothing. That's the one thing we can't do. But we, what we are gonna do is we're gonna make it just a single black outline. Now you could leave it as red, but I want to make sure all of you understand that this is just a cutting operation and not a print operation, at least um, what I'm showing you today. And so we're just gonna be showing a cut. So we have a curve. Um, it doesn't matter the thickness of the curve. Unlike in the um, laser cutter, many of you will use hairline. Um, it doesn't matter with the graph tech, but we will set it to hairline anyway. Now, one quick tip before we go on. If you were to make multiple of these hearts and you want them to be cut out at different times, and not all on necessarily the same page. Like let's say you have a green heart, a blue heart, and a red heart that you wanna make. Um, set them to different colors on the actual outline. And then you'll see in a moment how we can just simply uh, cut by color in the graph tech software. So here we have the black um, outline uh, heart, and we're just gonna hit launch, and we're going to do cut slash plot. Um, hopefully all of our computers will have this in the future, but for now, um, this is all we have. So what's going to pop up is an add setup option. 
um, and we're going to select, well, first our the brand. Um, there's only one option, so obviously select the only option there is. And then the model of our graph tech is the CE6600 Plus. We're going to select that and hit next. Um, we can call it whatever you want if you really care, um, but we're going to say that it's connected via graph tech USB, which it is. All right. Perfect. Now Cutting Master 4 is all set up and ready to go. So what you'll see here is you'll see that our heart is placed here and it's super huge. Now you may or may not want this, but for now let's assume that um, we're just going to keep it as it is. Let's start going into kind of the controls here. So. Uh, media size, user defined. Um, we do not want to use user defined media because we don't know the exact length and height of our media. But if you remember, our graph tech did um, get that for us earlier. So we're going to just hit poll size, and graph tech will just send the size of the media from the graph tech to us. Um, so that will be perfect and show us the actual perfect size of our. Um, media so we can cut the biggest possible heart. Now here's job size. Um, right now we have it selected to fit to media. I'm going to turn that off because I don't actually want it to cut out the entire piece. And now I can set the sizes I want. So here we have, I can set the size to be about a three inch one, three by two, um, or whatever I want. I can also deselect the proportional one. So if I wanted to make it exactly three inches by three inches, a perfect square, then I can. Now that gets rid of kind of, um, we can also do it by percentages or other things like that. So um, I'm gonna do this, a three by three inch heart, um, just to kind of make it kind of nice. Now here's the position. Um, ones. Let's say you don't want it really close to the edge, which you probably don't. Um, it just makes it a little harder. We're going to offset it by 0.1 inches um, going both ways. Um, as you can see, we have plenty of room on the media. This um, background here is actually all of our media, so we have plenty of room to give it a little offset um, just so that we don't end up cutting off the edge. Um, that won't be a problem but um because it, it has never cut off the edge for me but it could um do it and especially if you have really small images you might want to give it a little bit of an offset now you can do show me and the graph tech would go through and show you the area of the cut um, you can also uh, center it um, in different ways um, this one centers it to the bottom corner this one to the dead center this one to the dead center of in both directions. This one is just the dead center in the X direction. And this one is to the bottom left hand corner. Um, I have not found those to be extremely useful, but I'm sure they are. Um, this um, might be a little confusing. It's the photo of the person. But what this does is this is just the rotation. So you can either have it be straight up, upside down, to the left, or to the right. Um, for our thing, we just want it straight up and down. And remember, for most of these um, these cuts, you can always turn it a different direction afterwards. So, like, let's say I had a really, really long piece of material, um, and I needed um, it to be, you know, like, let's say a, a two foot by six foot piece of material. Right? I don't need to have it be two, six feet this direction. Um, our graph tech can't cut that big, but it can cut two feet in this direction and six feet in the, um, the Y direction. So that would be much more helpful for us. And so then we could just simply rotate it so that we have enough room um, on our media to cut it. So just a little tip. Um, you can add additional copies as well as space between each copy. So let's say I wanted to make six hearts. I could do that. Um, and do make sure to have some space in between each one. Um, it's not very useful. Um, and definitely you don't need this much space. It's just um, simply too much. 
You can also repeat the job. Um, we're not going to repeat the job today, but if you did, you could send the job as many times as you wanted. So let's say you're making um, like 100 t-shirts. You could either use the copy function um, or let's say you want to make 100 t-shirts and each piece of vinyl is only 10 feet long. You could make 10 copies, right? And you could repeat the job 10 times, right? And there you would have the 100 copies um, for you to do. Now, make sure it fits on your material by scrolling up. In our case, it would not fit, and we don't want um, 10 copies today. Um, and also uh, adjust these to make sure that your spacing fits perfectly. So, all right, sounds good. Now we're gonna move on to the, um, to the layer options. I know this is getting a little long, but this graph tech has a lot of options, and I hope that um, just showing off all these options will help everyone to be able to get started and work on the graph tech with very little difficulty. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to look at the by color or by layer. I said this last um, earlier, but for this one, you see we have the color black and we can select um, to have the color black either print or not print. So I have it selected because obviously it's our only color, um, so we do want it to be cut. But let's say we had a hundred colors, um, or like a hundred a hundred different um, hearts, right? We could print only the black ones, only the blue ones, only the green ones, whichever ones we want, just by hitting by color. Otherwise, you can use the by layer option, um, which is pretty popular. Um, but essentially, what that would do is you would make new layers in each of your Corel draw files and then it would just cut out each layer independently and it would probably work really well. Um, that's what I did yesterday or a few weeks ago actually now um, in order to make the stickers that I made. So for stickers um, definitely do by layer it tends to be more helpful. Um, and then just put your, uh, your sticker on one layer, then your cut out on another layer, and then your, um, your kiss cut on the third layer. So um, just put all those layers um, and kind of think through it. Um, you can also group the layers. Um, that's not very useful in my opinion, since you could just group your layers in graph tech um, or in the Corel Draw much, much easier. So you can also do this. You can use driver options um, and adjust the speed, line type, and all that in here. Um, I don't know if any of you will be messing with these, but if you do want to, you can. Um, just set all the speeds and stuff like that. Otherwise, as I said, plot plotter condition one that I have preset on the graph tech works great for vinyl and other cuts. So you can also um, adjust the panel. So um, this is just super kind of more advanced stuff we don't really need to go into. But essentially um, one panel is like one item. So you can make it slightly larger or slightly smaller um, and fit other things in. Um, so you can do all of that. You can also um, yeah, there's a lot of settings here. I don't fully understand all of them myself, so um, you guys can definitely play with this. I think um, Graph Tech does a great does a great job at just automatically creating panels for us, so we don't have to worry about that though. All right, then we have the um, advanced settings, um, and there are actually some advanced settings that you definitely want to work with. The first one is the weed border. We're gonna turn it off for this one, um, but weeding borders are extremely important. So let's say you're making a bunch of t-shirts all in one line, right? You don't want to have to go and weed your entire thing all in one go. So if you hit weed border and you select a margin, even if just 0.1, it will cut out the board, a border around your image so that 
um, you're just good to go. Um, we're not going to use weed border for this print, but in the future you guys can, and it'll just essentially weed out this black line all around it. You can also use horizontal weed lines or vertical weed lines. We're going to turn both of them off today, but essentially that would be for more complex or large um, cuts. You could definitely weed, um, like, cut it up into sections, right? And um, that would allow you to, uh, to weed a little easier, especially for larger options. So um, all of these um, aren't very important. Um, you can obviously switch your cutting direction or any of that if you really care about it, but um, for the most part, those are not very useful. And we're not going to use registration marks in today's example, but maybe if I make a video on how to make stickers, I will end up doing that. So this is all we have to do on the um, this side. All we're going to do next is hit send, but I'm not going to do that here because I will hit send when we hop back to looking at the graph tech so you all can see it cut out. So here we go. Alrighty, so welcome back. We're going to be finishing up our cut here today. And so you guys won't be able to see it, but I'm going to hit um, send here in one sec. Let me just focus the camera. There we go. So I'm going to hit send on the computer. Boom. And we will um, go back. So, hold on. Let me go. All right, here we go. So now it's gonna cut out the image for us real quick. And boom, we are all done. So we cut out the heart. As you can see, here is our heart. We pulled it off and it worked nearly perfect. So um, I slowed down the graph tech a ton for this example, I set it to 10 speed. Normally we run this at a much higher speed, around 64 speed, um, and that's in centimeters per second, but I slowed it down for you all. But don't be afraid when you guys come in, use condition one, and suddenly it is going at super speed. That is completely normal. All right, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you learned quite a bit about how to use the graph tech today. Um, definitely come in and use this amazing tool. Bye.